Hi, it's Katrina. From shocking gods of the ancient world shared by cultures across oceans to the bizarre prediction of cannibalism, here are 10 of the wildest historical and archaeological coincidences you won't believe. Number 10. God Icon All over the world, there is a religious god icon that can be found at dozens and dozens of ruins. This icon looks basically identical from Egypt to South America, from the Celts to the ancient Greeks, from the Persians to the Assyrians, and many more. The icon is always found in the center of doorways and archways, usually etched in stone at the peak of temple doors. The icon can either be male or female, and sometimes it even looks like a monster. But there is no mistaking how similar they all are, with the way that their arms are outstretched and the fact that they are always in the exact same position, holding something in their hands. But what could this all mean? We know it has something to do with religion and that it has to do with perfect symmetry. Each religious icon has arms outstretched in opposite directions and they are always holding twin objects, being perfectly symmetrical. Richard Cassaro has gone in depth in the subject and proposes that the world's first culture shared the same religious icon and that it is the symbol of a forgotten Golden Age religion that was shared around the world. The discovery of all these icons suggests that the ancient cultures of our world were more familiar with each other than we give them credit for. How is it possible for cultures that have never met to have the same religious icon and carve it in the same sacred places above entrances of religious or spiritual places? Of course, we have no idea how ancient cultures could have been in contact with one another or how they became inspired to create the same things. But the theory is that as humans evolved and religion began, those early people continued the same tradition as they spread and migrated throughout the world. What do you think could explain these similarities? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. The Three Geniuses It's always a great big coincidence whenever you meet a person who shares the same birthday as you. But what about three geniuses entwined in a life and death cycle on the exact same dates? It began on January 8, 1642 when Galileo Galilei died. Galileo was a brilliant Italian astronomer who discovered four of the largest moons of Jupiter, craters and mountains on the moon, and he was fairly certain that the Earth was not actually the center of the universe, which got him in major hot water with the church. Exactly 300 years after Galileo died, Stephen Hawking was born. That would be January 8, 1942. Stephen Hawking contributed a significant amount of scientific knowledge to our world as well, even changing the way we understand how the universe works and how gravity and black holes function. Stephen Hawking died on March 14, 2018. Albert Einstein was born on March 14, 1879, making this birth coincide with the date of death of Stephen Hawking. The birth and death of Stephen Hawking coinciding with Albert Einstein and Galileo makes this an absolutely outrageous coincidence that's almost enough to make a person believe in reincarnation. Even more bizarre is that both Hawking and Einstein lived to be 76 years old. Whether there is some cosmic connection between these three men, or it's just the greatest birthday slash death coincidence ever, we will never know. Number 8. The Curse of Timur Timur was a conqueror from 1336 to 1405. He was a Turco-Mongol warrior who founded the Timurid Empire, a once prosperous and bloody empire throughout Persia and Central Asia. He completed a lot and conquered more than most ancient rulers of the world. He tried to restore the Yuan Dynasty in China, he controlled much of the remains of the great Genghis Khan's shattered empire, and he allegedly killed about 17 million people through conquest, or about 5% of the population. It was in 1941, over 600 years after Timur's death, that the Russians decided to open his tomb. An expedition of archaeologists set out to Samarkand to finally open the tomb of the legendary emperor. But not everyone was on board. Locals feared there was a curse attached to his tomb. The curse stated that anyone who tried to open the tomb would bring great destruction down upon their nation. Of course, archaeologists never heed warnings like this, otherwise they would probably never excavate anything. On June 20th, the tomb was opened. When they pried the lid off, a horrible stench filled the mausoleum. Unlike when Egyptian mummies are unveiled, which apparently usually smell sweet. And then, two days after Timur's tomb was opened, on June 22, 1941, the Nazi Germans invaded the Soviet Union without ever declaring a war and went on to kill millions of people. 
Some claim it happened because Timur's tomb was opened, making it one of the strangest historical coincidences involving an ancient curse. Number 7. Alien Cave Art Thousands of years ago on the Colorado Plateau, ancient people painted images of beings from other worlds and maybe even other dimensions. This Native American artwork was left behind on rock panels all throughout the Southwest, with the oldest being the Barrier Canyon pictographs. According to the National Endowment for the Humanities, some of these paintings could be up to 9,000 years old, with many confirmed to be at least 5,000 years old. Some of the images painted here are animals and other seemingly ordinary creatures, but some are large, human-like beings with no arms or legs and giant eyeballs. They are most likely different deities or attempts to represent spirits. The paintings are made of red ochre, and some by our standards are a bit scary. But what religion doesn't have a terrifying being? Of course, some people claim they represent visitors from another planet. But here's what's so strange. There has also been mysterious rock art discovered in Siberia that dates back to around the same time, 5,000 years ago, and shows the same type of alien-like creatures, possibly even interdimensional travelers. To this day, the connection between the two prehistoric sites has evaded scientists. Nobody can figure out how people from before the dawn of civilization could have possibly found inspiration in each other to create such similar artwork. What some people say is that the only logical explanation is that prehistoric humans from all over the world really did witness beings from beyond our planet and drew them on the rocks. Number 6. The Gorgons Most people have heard of Medusa. She is a popular figure in Greek mythology who was once a beautiful woman who was turned into a hideously ugly monster with a hairdo full of snakes, known as the Gorgon. There is arguably no snake woman quite as popular as Medusa. But across the world in Mesoamerica, there was another snake woman monster goddess oddly similar to Medusa. This figure is Coatlicue, and she comes from the Aztec culture, who worshipped her as one of their gods who gave birth to the moon and the stars. Both Medusa and Coatlicue could technically be considered gorgons. They have both been depicted as humanoid creatures with many serpents coming out of them. In Aztec culture, Coatlicue was seen as a woman who wore a skirt of snakes. Unlike Medusa having a head of snakes, Coatlicue wore them as a living skirt. But the similarities are there nonetheless, making you wonder where the inspiration for all these snake women came from. Number 5. Edgar Allan Poe, Future Teller Edgar Allan Poe published a story of a shipwreck in 1839. It was called The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket, and it was the only complete novel ever written by the famous poet. In the book, the narrator describes a horrifying tale of disaster on the high seas. The main character is a stowaway on his father's whaling ship. There's a mutiny, a large storm, and the main character becomes stuck below deck with a friend and two others, Dirk Peters and Richard Parker. After suffering from hunger and eating nothing but a bit of old turtle meat, they realize it's time to sacrifice one of the group for the sake of the rest. It ends up being Richard Parker who's sacrificed to be eaten by the few remaining crew members. After the book was published, it was a complete failure. Critics hated it because it was too violent and too inaccurate. Poe himself had to come out and agree that it was a very silly book. It wasn't until much later that it became a cult classic. Jules Verne even published a sequel in 1897. But here's the terrifying coincidence. In 1884, a yacht left England en route to Australia. It was called the Mignonette, and it wasn't prepared to make such a huge trip. It sank in a storm. Four men escaped in a lifeboat, and they survived by eating turtle meat. This was very similar to Poe's story. Another similar aspect is that on the ship was a man named Richard Parker, the same name of the guy who gets eaten in Poe's novel. He was ultimately killed and eaten by the others in the lifeboat, who even cut him open and drank his blood while it was still fresh and warm. As you can see, the coincidence here is remarkable. Either Poe could see into the future, or his imagination was so powerful that his story actually came true in real life. Number 4. Amazonian Sumerians Back in 1927, the Italian priest Carlo Crespi descended into the Amazon jungle in Ecuador, who over the next decade allowed him to discover many amazing archaeological pieces throughout the region. Some of the amazing finds made by Carlo have stunned scientists to this very day. He discovered tablets covered in what appeared to be hieroglyphics. Nobody has ever been able to decipher these hieroglyphics, 
And then in 1962, the museum where many of the relics were held apparently caught fire and some of the precious artifacts were lost. But here's where the coincidences come in. Carlo was convinced that the Sumerians had actually visited the Amazon jungle thousands of years before and had contact with primitive civilizations there. This would be a direct connection between the Middle East and the Amazon far before the New World was ever even discovered. Many of the relics found by Carlo looked identical to artifacts discovered by modern archaeologists in ancient Sumeria. It is hard to understand if this is all true, but until more evidence is found, it remains an obscure idea. Number 3. The Beginning and the End of the Civil War On April 9, 1865, General Robert E. Lee and Colonel Charles Marshall met at the house of Wilmer McLean. They were Confederate officers. It wasn't long after they showed up at the house that General Ulysses S. Grant arrived with his party of Union officers, including Captain Robert Todd Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's son. And there, in the parlor of Wilmer McLean's house, the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia surrendered and the Civil War was over. Wilmer himself had been too old to fight when the war began. For its majority, he had been a simple merchant buying and selling sugar. The four years before the defeat of the Confederacy, the First Battle of Manassas, also known as Bull Run, had actually been fought in Wilmer's very own backyard. It was the first battle of the Civil War. And so, by some strange twist of fate, or perhaps coincidence, the Civil War actually started in Wilmer McLean's backyard in the year 1861 and came to an abrupt end inside his parlor four years later in 1865. Number 2. Flying Serpents Ancient Egyptians and ancient Mesoamericans never met, and yet somehow they both had an obsession with flying serpent deities. They both built pyramids, often in rows of three aligning with important stars in the sky, and they both developed impressive calendars. The cultural similarities between the two ancient civilizations is hard to ignore. For example, the Aztec culture worshipped Quetzalcoatl, a feathered snake god from between the years 1200 BC to 1521, when the Spanish came and basically bulldozed them and their religion to the ground. Before this, from 3000 BC and onwards, the Egyptians worshipped the goddess of the pharaohs Isis, whom they often depicted as being a feathered serpent. In other words, both gods were flying serpents covered in feathers. They looked identical, but nobody from either civilization ever made it across the ocean to see the other, making historians wonder why they had chosen to worship the exact same god. Some have suggested the feathered serpent may have been a real creature witnessed by both cultures. Even before the Aztecs, the earlier civilization of the Olmec were creating sculptures of jaguar-human hybrids that looked an awful lot like Egyptian sphinxes. Could these have been real creatures that had come and gone with no physical trace of them left behind? In any case, both of these cultures were fascinated by this depiction of a flying snake bird god. Number 1. Twain and the Comet Samuel Longhorn Clemens, known to most people by his pen name Mark Twain, lived a very strange life of coincidences. He had what you might call a cosmic relationship with Halley's Comet, the most famous comet to ever grace our planet. The comet was first recorded in 239 AD, then officially named by astronomer Edmund Halley after learning of the same comet witnessed in 1531, 1607, and 1682. Before his death, he predicted the comet would return in 1758, and it did. And then it returned again in 1835, just as Mark Twain was being born. What makes this coincidence the strangest is that the famous author admitted his connection with the comet. He was utterly aware of it and was once quoted as saying, I came in with Halley's Comet and I expect to go out with it. And that's exactly what happened. When Mark Twain died of a heart attack on April 21, 1910, the comet just so happened to arrive back at Earth for the first time in 75 years, wrapping Mark Twain's life up in a neat little package of coincidence. Of course, there is no secret meaning or cosmic truth behind Mark Twain and Halley's Comet. It's just a curious element of fate. Thanks for watching. What's the wildest coincidence you've ever experienced yourself? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for another awesome video. See you later. Bye.